Hello everyone and welcome to another Steam Next Fest demo. We are still churning out the content from that Steam Next Fest that ended uh, a few days ago. I'm still catching up on some of the recordings uh, that I did and putting them together so that I can put them out. And this one was one that caught my eye. I actually saw this on social media, I think. I don't think I actually saw this on Steam itself. But it's called Jot and Slayer Hordes of Hell. And it's a roguelike type game, very similar to games uh, like Deep Rock Survivor. It's probably the most obvious one that I can think of. And it's, you know, one, a game that I've, or a genre of games, I should say, that I've kind of been leaning into a little bit more over the last uh, 6 to 12 months. And I'm enjoying them. They're easy to jump in and jump out of. There's tons of action. It's a visual... Uh, like um, feast if you like of, of stuff going on, on the screen action and moves and blood and lights and god knows what else and this one i think is going to be in the same vein it looks to me very much like it's set in a uh, a norse type background maybe like the nordics so uh, with barbarians and uh, uh sort of viking type people <laughs> viking type characters so yeah we're gonna jump in and see what's what Okay, so we're on the character selection screen here. We have got a Berserker. We've got a Cirrus, a Flame Sister who's locked, and a Revenant. Uh, I quite like the uh, the look of the Revenant, to be honest, although he does also look very, very cool. We're going to go with the Revenant. Okay, so we've got some skins. We've got different weapons. Looks like we've got just the one here. Which is absolutely fine. Uh, looks like we've got lots of maps here. It's quite cool. Uh, so we are going to be... Yeah, Midgard. So I was right. So Midgard, Nilfhelm, yeah. Alfheim. These are ones that uh, at least ring a bell in Norse mythology. We're going to go there. And we are going to... Uh, go straight on. We're going to jump onto normal difficulty. Right, here we go. So very, very simple for those of you that haven't seen games like this before. Uh, all the attacking is kind of done for you. Your role is to select upgrades and ensure that you move enough that you don't get hit. And that is about it. So we'll see what kind of uh, differences we go. So we've got an objective to pick from here. Drinking horns or braziers. So the drinking horns, no real Viking party is complete without proper mead horns. Collect them all. So we're going to collect ten. Nearby braziers uh, thrum with eldritch power, possibly useful for rituals. Find and light them. Let's, let's light the braziers, shall we? Uh, like level it up already. Uh, we can choose revenant or Thor. Let's choose the revenant guy first. So we can increase the range. Uh, sorry, increase attack damage. A skull that shatters an enemy on impact. On enemy impact, sorry, or rain of arrows. Let's do a rain of arrows, shall we? So it looks like the stuff we want to do is down this way. Is our health regen at all? Doesn't look like it does. It, maybe, we, maybe if we get a trait, but it looks like we are going to have to try and find some health at some stage. I'm sure it will, it will give us something to grab. And here we go. Here is our first pressure to light. The old attack. Oh my god, what is that? It blows up. Level up three. Right, let's do Thor. What we got? Uh, lightning over a circular wave of lightning damage. A returning hammer of Thor. Uh, oh, it's Mjolnir. Is that how you pronounce it? And a zapping lightning sentinel. I like the lightning Nova. Let's give that a try. Right, we've got to try and stay in this circle for long enough. Leveling up quicker. Well, now we can pick Loki as well. Let's stick with the Revenant. Uh, a dangerous and immobilizing hunting web. Let's do the barrage of guided arrows. Let's try that. Oh, and some food. Lovely. Okay, there's yeah, quite a lot. What's our cue? Okay, it's just like a piercing strike that goes through all directions. Lots of experience to pick up there. Uh, Thor, what else you got? Lightning strike. Lightning strikes in four fixed directions. We can increase the skill damage of the god skills. Uh, let's do the lightning strike. and get these other braziers light or a light sorry you're gonna attack the guy that's nearer mm. 
already we're seeing we've now got skeletons we've got archers that are uh, shooting at us higher critical hit chance when using attack and class skills a barrage gun and arrows we can upgrade the wave of arrows uh let's do a barrage of guided arrows let's do that get these lit it looks like we have a clock at the top there to pick up some gold it looks like we have got a clock for i'm assuming that's like the raid time but how long we've got to survive until the mission ends yes we are oh god what are these things Okay, right, the, uh, some of those guided arrow shots are getting really, really good. So if we can keep leveling those up, that would be quite good. What's in Freya? Let's have a look. Uh, sharp oscillating discs. Receive a, here, uh, receive a reward of gold for each time the hero levels up. Not actually sure what the gold is for. Maybe that's for upgrades outside of the game. Hmm. We'll do the sharp oscillating discs. Next objective, I can see there's a countdown in the top there in 40 seconds. The more objectives we do, the quicker we complete the level or the more experience we get. What is that on the map? The gold thing there. What is that? Come here. Is it some kind of like loot bug? Uh, yes, it is. Look at all the gold and the food. Lovely. Dash is very useful, isn't it? In certain scenarios. Right, let's go back into Thor. Or we can increase health. Or we can do more lightning strikes in four fixed directions. Um, we'll take that. Right, choose an objective. Portals. A tear has appeared between this realm and another, allowing enemies to spill through. Kill them all and close it. So there's one portal. An ancient undead champion's thirst for combat from their graves. Summon and vanquish them. So we get nine gold if we take him out. And it's a medium difficulty. Or we take this one, which is easier. Let's give ourselves a challenge. We're going to go for the medium one. Right, where are we going? We're going up the top. Uh, what's in Loki? A wall of flammable gas. An illusion of the world serpent. Uh, quick, quick, let's, do, let's do the serpent. That sounds like fun. It gets to a point with these games sometimes where you upgrade stuff and there's so much going, going on on screen that it's actually quite difficult to actually visually recognise if the upgrades you've bought are actually doing any good. summon this guy. How strong is he? Oh, it's a pumpkin guy. Oh, God. Okay. We froze him in time. Get him, get him. Okay, he is quite strong. At the moment, at least, he's reasonably easy to keep away from. The attacks that I'm using are not targeting him specifically all the time, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know what double cast is. Does that mean my god skills maybe go go twice? His attacks are easy enough to stay away from. We are whittling him down slowly. Keyword slowly, though. A lot of people that way. Oh, and we got him. Lovely. Ooh, look at all that gold. Right, we're now choosing a subclass. 
So we can have the Undying. The Ravenous Undead Spirit keeps its host alive at all costs. Um, triggers Ghost Wolf triggers death. Okay. The Spirit of the Wolf controlling the Ravenous Body significantly empowers its haunting wolf. So he gets 50% more damage for the wolf that's running around with us. Um, when standing when standing spirit still, attack speed is plus 50% and it gives us weak knockback as well. What do we think here? Um... I think either one of these two would be my guess. I like the idea of attacking quicker when we're st stood still, because he is quite slow. But equally, I like the idea of the, the wolf going around doing more damage. So we're gonna we're gonna allow the wolf to run around and do its thing. Of course, we don't know if any of these decisions we're making are actually any good in the grand scheme of things. We don't actually know whether or not these upgrades are the right ones are we picking ones that work properly or not oh, there's another loot bug over here let's go see if we can grab them there's also a chest i can see at the top there get it Lovely. Right, what's in the chest a trinket crystal geode a large crystal geode cracking open Reveals experience crystals. We'll get 50% of our current level. We can heal, or we can draw all experience crystals in a large radius. Let's do that. I hope we get a nice influx of. We didn't really get that many. That was disappointing. Next objective in 54 seconds. What else can we do? The Haunting Wolf offers minor healing. Okay. Can increase the attack damage. Haunting Wolf has a chance to kill, instantly kill non-elite enemies. 10% chance. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take those odds. I mean, in terms to how this game feels against the other ones, there's one I've got as well. Not only is... Um, there's obviously Vampire Survivors is the one that a lot of people know. I think that was the, the, one of the first... God almighty. What is going on here? Um, that was one of the first that came out that sort of took took us all by surprise at how much fun it was. And then we still started seeing lots of others coming out doing the same. Deep Rock Survivor is one I've had an awful lot of fun with. But there's also... I, can't remember, I think it's called Not Another Zombie Survival or something like that. This is a lot closer to that game than it is Deep Rock Survivor. But I do like this. I like the theme. I like the graphics. I like the way it looks. It plays well. The FPS is holding pretty strong as well, which is really good. Um, yeah, so so far, so good. So we're going to choose another objective. Curse of Winter. Endure an overwhelming slowing cold. Endure an overwhelming and slowing cold amidst falling ice crystals. Or the same thing with ice crystals and elemental minions. I feel like maybe we go for the middle one. I feel like that one might be too hard. We're gonna go with this one. We have to go. We have to go and trigger it to happen. Right. What? What else? Thought have we got? Increase health. Stun knockback enemies with each attack. Yeah, we'll do that. There is rerolls at the bottom there that I haven't really been using. I'm just kind of going with whatever it gives me at the moment. I mean, I suppose one thing you could be hypercritical with is that I mean this this game is really not doing anything different to not another um, zombie survival game that I've got and I suppose in this genre it is kind of difficult to stand out from the crowd there's not really much go oh, this is gonna make me slow isn't it if this is ice um, there's not a huge amount going on that you can say, right, well, that's really different, that's really cool, that does, that game does this and that one doesn't sort of thing. So you are really just looking for graphics, for immersion and theme, I guess, is that's that's the big difference. Is all the abilities are really cool, don't get me wrong. Um, but outside of that, there's not really much to separate the games. We are just looking to say, well, hello. Where did you come from? Did I summon you as well, or have you just turned up as a random em random enemy? Empty. Right, 
take that. We'll take that. And your treasure chest with a new trinket. You can draw an experience. Uh, wooden dial of the Norn Skull can change the future. Banish plus three. Class skill upgrade. We'll take that. Uh, yeah, 20 arrows. For my reign of fire now. That's lovely. We've got 20 seconds to survive the cold. With all these falling ice crystals. It's actually a, bit, a, little, bit, a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Our movement speed is just enough that we can keep ourselves out of trouble. Also notice on the left there, that looks like that's all our abilities on the left-hand side. I wonder if we can only have so many abilities. So we do have to be a little careful with what we choose. But I'm not seeing any more new abilities. I'm just seeing upgrades to existing ones. And there we go, the ice. Freezing cold has been survived. Shit, I'm getting rather close to death here. Got ourselves a loot bug over here. If we can kill it, I might take the healing if it can give me some. Oh, it had, some, it had some heals with it. Okay, that's good. Gives us a little, a little bit extra. There's some food down below me, actually, I've just seen. There's a, gold, there's a piece of gold there. Yeah, this is getting... Suddenly, this uh, feels like this is getting a little bit more tricky. I'm not sure what this shit over here is, but we're going to come over here and see what, what's going on. Oh, I think that was healing. I think that just gave me my health back. Right, Loki, what you got for me? Uh, make dash usable more often. That could be quite cool. Better health regen. We'll take the health regen, actually. What trinket have we got in here? Take, take the magnet. There we go. Look at all that experience coming in. That's a bit more like it. Area of random debuff status. Uh, bonus chest and reward. Uh, sorry, bonus chest reward and skill choice. We'll take the. We'll make our serpent a bit stronger because it doesn't seem to be doing a huge amount when it pops up. We've got a uh, another chest at the top right. We can make our way towards here. Okay, what we got here? A small portion of pungent red elixir that boils the very blood coursing through our hero's veins. He's in bloodlust. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Does that make him just uh, attack a bit quicker? I don't know. 30 more seconds then until our next objective. I've only got four and a half minutes now of this raid left. Can we survive? I'd imagine that this game will get easier if you can upgrade your characters so they start with better perks. Better, uh, better skills and more upgraded skills. Again, that's very much a trope of these types of games. You uh, you go in, you do the raids, you come out, and you spend your experience to upgrade your person so that you start in a better place the next time round. Uh, increased movement speed. I feel like that might be uh, pretty good. Make myself a little bit more lighter on our toes. Right, here we go. So we've got sacrificial pylons. Some people can only be stopped by sacrifice. Slay enemies near the pylons. A number of cursed knitting poles scourge, scourge the area. Sorry, destroy them. Um, let's do that one. Oh, there. Pole opposite ends of the map as well. It's not ideal. Yeah, we can't use... Can we not use any of our abilities in here? Oh, I don't think we can. When I say that's not ideal, is it? Come on. We're going to have to keep jumping in and then jumping immediately back out again to try and clear down the number of enemies in there. And we didn't make it. That did 96 damage to me, those flying things. Jesus Christ. My goodness me. Right. So new modifier unlocked, Evil Dead, chance 
uh, on enemy death 5%, effect invulnerable for 5 seconds. Resource bonus plus 25. So there we go. So we killed 1,800 enemies. We did get ourselves a bunch of gold. Resource bonus plus 30%. Soulstone zone. No, no, there's a boss apparently, which we didn't maybe see, get to. I don't know. Uh, well, there we go. We did level up our revenant to level 19 in that one. So that was the skills. Yeah, so I think there's only so many skills that you can unlock and that they go up to level 3. Alright, so I'm assuming that once you go back to the main menu before we wrap up this video, I'm assuming you can go back here now. Is it Virtues? Where's our, where's the Revenant? So, yeah, I'll look gold in the top right. So, Rapid Fire, quick to draw and even quicker to release attack speed. So, yeah, we got five levels we can do this. And you can see down the bottom, the attack speed will go up each time. So, it costs five to do that one. Fifteen to do the next. Or what have we got here? So, this is just for damage. Uh, ghost walk duration. And that one costs us 200 to do that one. For the attack damage on the wolf. Goodness me. Everything everything gets more expensive, I see, as you use it. So that's 30 right now. Watch if I do... We'll do attack speed for this guy because he needs it. And oh, it doesn't go up to 30. Okay, I thought, it, I thought it would go up. But it didn't. So there we go. So that's what you spend your stuff on. And now next time we go with Revenant, he's going to be that little bit stronger. So there we go. That is a quick look at Jot and Slow Hordes of Helldem. I don't think there's a great deal of point looking any further into this just because we've already seen kind of what the game is going to be. There's going to be some variety in missions, in bosses, in enemies and abilities and heroes, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, if you've played games like Deep Rock Survivor, if you've played Not Another Zombie Survivor, whatever it's called, if you've played Vampire Survivors, you are going to like this if you like those other games, I suspect. Um, and if you like Norse and Greek mythology, is it? No, it's Norse mythology. Um, then you are probably going to find something in here to like as well. I think these games are always good fun. They're great to jump in and jump out of. This one is not breaking the mold, but it's certainly not a bad game at all. Um, it, the demo, I think, is still available at time of recording, so go and check it out on Steam if you want to give it a go. And I believe it is due to come out before the end of this year, um, if I'm correct and my memory serves me correctly. So thank you very much, everyone, for checking out Jot and Slow Hordes of Hell Demo with me. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that notification bell for more, and I'll see you all in the next one.